Hey guys, welcome to unit one, lesson two for geometry. In this video, we are going to be talking about line segments and distance as the title suggests. Makes sense, right, right. We're gonna learn a little bit about uh, a new symbol. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna learn kind of the first of a problem type that we are going to see in various forms over and over and over and over again this entire course. So this is gonna be extremely foundational. We're also gonna look at the distance formula as well. In the next video, we'll look at the midpoint formula, but we're gonna be talking about line segments. So we talked about lines in the last video. Line is, is one of the three undefined terms of Euclidean geometry. A line segment is just part of a line as it makes sense it's a segment of a line that's that's easy peasy right no big deal so a line goes on and on forever we 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 uh, notate that with arrows at the end so I'm trouble lining up my arrows there or maybe I need to like squint maybe I'm getting old <laughs> okay so a line goes on and on forever so a line segment begins and ends. So a line segment, um, while I'm writing this word, how many points does it take to define a line? You know, I know you do. You can put it in the comments if you want, or you can just scream it at your television screen, whatever, whatever makes you feel happier, right? It takes two points to define a line. It takes two points to define a line segment. So a line segment, we usually, when we're handwriting them, we put dots at the end to represent that it ends. So this might be line segment G H. Okay. We, and this is the symbol part I talked about earlier. If we're talking about line, so let's say this is line, excuse me, how about L M, right? We learned that to, to symbolize a line, we do L M with a line on top of it. So a line with arrows, or if you happen to be like what I was drawing there, some sort of squiggly nonsense that everybody understands is a line, right? <coughs> Excuse me. For a line segment, we illustrate that with a segment on top, basically. you don't. We don't usually draw the little, little balls at the end. You just draw it without arrows. So line, we read this, line segment GH. So that's what a line segment is. Now for our really common problem type, we're going to jump in like we often do with just an example. Okay, so here's our example. We're going to have a line segment with endpoints that are X, and Z, and then we're gonna have a collinear point Y on there. What does collinear mean? We talked about that in the last video. Uh, so it's it's a point that's on the same line, right? On the same line segment even, right? So it's, it's, it's right there. Now, these lines, these uh, segments are labeled as such. XY has the measure 3A. <gasps> No, there's algebra and geometry. You're going to live. It's going to be okay. I promise. All right? And <laughs> segment YZ is 14. And then segment XZ, and we usually kind of denote this this way from here to here, is 5A minus 14. No, 4. Minus Four. Can we still see that on the screen? Yeah, you can. Okay, so this is a segment addition problem. When we talk about proofs in the next chapter, we'll learn how to do proofs along with segment addition. But basically, it says if we it, it this is a this is a not a theorem but a postulate, and I call it. You'll learn this when we talk about proofs. Postulates slash axioms, the same word. Those are synonymous. Um, they, it, they're kind of the no duh rules, right? So they're, because they don't really take a lot of proof. It's just like, okay, obviously if we have these two segments that make up this larger segment to figure them all out, we just, or to get the sum of these two segments, we, 
you know, add them because sums, and that's how that works. So if I was to write this out in, in words, we're going to learn another new symbol. If I want to find the, the number, not the picture, but the number of this, then I'm finding its measure. So the measure of segment XY, okay, I'm going to write this down. I'm going <coughs> to notate that that's how we say this. So we've not seen that before. We're going to see that a lot. Measure of angle, measure of segment, measure of whatever, right? So the measure of segment X, Y, right? So that's how we would say this little bit right there, right? <coughs> Excuse me equals the measure of segment, whoa, no, I, I started with XY. Measure of segment XY plus the measure of segment YZ equals, now we're gonna, we're gonna learn this soon, numbers are equal, so measures are equal, pictures are congruent. We'll talk about that, that soonish, right? The measure of XY plus the measure of YZ equals the measure of XZ. This, and we, we will learn more about this word, but this right here is called the segment addition postulate. Um, yeah, we're not gonna worry about writing that down. We'll worry about that when we do um, proofs and we have to use all those kind of things. But that is what this is, is the segment addition postulate. So you probably have already figured out the punchline of this particular example, right? In this particular example, we're trying to, the instructions would say solve for A, right? So in order to solve for A, in this particular example, we would do... 3a plus 14 equals 5a minus 4. Now, that's nice and easy. We don't even have to do any crazy systems or anything weird, right? We just have one equation with one variable. We can solve that like it's nothing. So let's do that real quick. So here we're going to get our um, numbers together. So let's, how about subtract 14 from both sides. Those 14s cancel, leaving us with just a 3a on this side equals 5a. And the negative 4 minus 14, remember your integer rules would be negative 18, right? Signs are the same, so we add and keep the sign. Keep keep track of those. I know you're prob probably just coming out of Algebra 1 into this course, so keep all of those things, keep all of those things straight, right? So now let's get our A's together. So we're gonna, in order to move this 5A, we're gonna subtract the 5A from this side. If we do it from that side, we gotta do it from this side. So minus 5a over here, those cancel. 3a minus 5a, the signs are different. And so we're going to subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. So it's gonna be negative 2a equals negative 18. Last, <coughs> but certainly not least on this particular problem is we have this negative two multiplied onto the a. So to get rid of it, we do the its inverse. And so we're going to divide by negative two, divide on this side, divide on that side. Those cancel, leaving us with a equals positive nine. So we're going to see this a lot. This is a problem where we have some algebra, some letters stuck into a theory or a theorem or a postulate or some other geometry picture. And we've got to do, in order to do the algebra, we have to understand the geometry. So we're going to see this repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Let's look at the distance formula. Let me flip a couple pages in the book over here. So I'm going to make a new thing, make that go away, and bring up a 
picture of a quadrant plane. Okay, so if we want to find the distance between two points, so let's say we've got point A here, and we've got point B right there. Okay, so we want to find this distance right here. Now, you could, and if you know the Pythagorean theorem, whoops, I went too far on that. How about here? And then here to here. You would look, and you could see that this is a right triangle, right? Here, and so you could actually use the Pythagorean theorem. The distance formula is actually based on the Pythagorean theorem. I don't know if I said this in this video or I'm distracted and I said it before, so if I'm repeating myself at this point in this video, there it is, but we could actually derive the distance formula from the Pythagorean theorem. If I get bored one day, I'll make that video. I may have already said that. I don't remember whether I said it before when I was thinking about what I was going to say in this video or on the video, but either way, it's fine. So the distance formula is we have a couple points here. Assuming that these are, since they're not labeled, we pretty much have to assume that these points are, or it's all the um, interval on this, this thing. Let's see, let me move this over a little bit, is ones, right? So this B would be the point one, two, three, four, two, right? And this point A would be negative one, two, three, four, five. So negative five, negative one, two, three. So those are the points that we're dealing with, right? So if we were to, and if we were to do this with the Pythagorean theorem, by the way, if y'all if y'all have learned that in your algebra one course or whatever else, or or potentially in a middle school course, then you could look and say this is length one, two, three, four, five, and then you could say this is length one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you would square those, and then take the square root of that to get this answer right there, right? So the distance formula allows us to do that, but kind of have the problem already set up for that, 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 um, for this type of problem. And <laughs> we're finding the distance up between two points. Okay. So the distance formula, let's use a different color here. We're looking for distance D. Okay. And if we're looking for distance D and we're given the two points, then we solve it this way. Now, if you know the Pythagorean theorem, you know that it's going to end with a square root. And so that's what happens in the distance formula. We've got the square root of x2. Whoa. 2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That is the distance formula right there. You need to rememberize that one. It needs to be in your noggin if it's not already. You may have seen this formula before. Sometimes this shows up in Algebra 1, one classes, and sometimes it doesn't. It kind of depends, all of that kind of stuff. Um, on If you came from public school, it, it, if I'm not greatly mistaken, at this point, as of the recording of this video, I'm pretty sure the distance formula is on the Algebra 1 formula sheet. So you probably have seen it at some point. But if you haven't, Merry Christmas, there it is. So in this case, if we call this point one and this point two, we can plug and chug in here, which is which is one of the reasons why formulas are nice because you just have to know the numbers, stick them where they go, and then just crank out the answer. So we're going to not forget to do this square root at the end. That's a, that's a common place of forgetting to do that square root, especially when you're doing the Pythagorean theorem. So x2 would be 4 minus y, excuse me, x1, which would be negative 5, so 4 minus negative 5. I like to put those extra parentheses just to keep it neat, right? Squared, don't forget the squared. That's another common place to forget stuff. Plus y2 would be 2 minus negative 3 squared again don't forget that now then we just walk through order of operations it's easy peasy lemon squeezy you can pull out your calculator for anything you don't want or sanity checks or whatever else so inside here we've got a ka-chink ka-chink right and another ka-chink ka-chink 
So this turns into 4 plus 5, which 4 plus 5 is 9 squared plus 2 plus 3, because of the kachink kachink, is 5 squared. Don't forget to bring down the square root. Those are beautiful lines. So gorgeous. They're totally straight. It's just your eyes. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. Plus 5 times 5, or 5 squared, is 25. Don't forget to bring down the square root. 81 plus 25 is 106. Square root of 106. Oh, I'm not doing a particular example. YOLO. Hey, so there are several different possibilities right now for how your teacher, if you are not one of my students, might want you to write this answer. If this was a word problem for me personally, if this was a word problem, we would punch this in on the calculator and we would get a, an approximate decimal and <coughs> we would get something bloody, bloody, blah. Actually, why don't we figure that out? Let me pause this and grab my calculator and we'll do it and i'm back y'all didn't even notice the time difference so when i punch it in on the handy dandy calculator i get 10.295630 or 14 i'm just gonna round since i don't know what how many sig figs we want or whatever else and we I'm just kind of making up these these numbers in this particular problem to give you this example one that's even different than ones in the textbook so you have even more examples to look at yay happy days um all that to say, let's just round two decimal places because we don't know. So 10.30, right? In that case, it would be 10.30. If it was a word problem, again, there would be some kind of units involved, and we would do that answer that way. Um, you, would, you could also, if you wanted an exact answer, you could try to reduce this. Now, unfortunately, if I'm not greatly mistaken, I got to remember, yeah, um, there aren't any perfect squares that go into 106, not 25, not 4, not 16, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, definitely not 100, right? And so there aren't any perfect squares. So you could actually, if this was this problem, if it wasn't a word problem, you would want the exact answer. And so you'd just circle that and move on with your life. Again, if it was a word problem uh, or a physics problem or some other things like that, which would be a word problem, right? You would get get your decimal equivalent answer and that's all there is to that so that's pretty much the end of this video thank you guys for tuning in if you're one of my students i'll see you in class do your homework all those things you're awesome rock stars if you're not one of my students thanks for joining us let us know what other math content science content or general homeschool content would be helpful to you thank you guys and have a fan flipping tabulous day